Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe, and I'm the host. I'm Sean Canan, WMNF's News and Public Affairs Director. Today, we're going to talk about New College of Florida in Sarasota. And I hope that if you're part of the New College community, you call in or write about your experience as well. I want to have as many people participate as possible today. New College is a small liberal arts college, but it's also part of the state college and university system. And that mix makes it popular with many students and faculty, but it also makes it a target. On Friday, Governor Ron DeSantis' office announced that he was appointing six people to the New College of Florida Board of Trustees, and there are 13 total members. Later on in the show, we're going to talk with Andrew Goddard, who is president of United Faculty of Florida. Joining me right now to talk about New College of Florida and what the changes might mean is New College alumnus Chelsea Hall. She's a PhD candidate at Harvard in Religion, Gender, and Culture Studies. Welcome to WMNF, Chelsea. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have been asked to be on MNF. I'm just excited to be on MNF. I grew up listening to MNF. I'm, you know, at Sarasota local. And um, yeah, so right now we're really just trying to um, focus on the students and the faculty initiatives going on in response to the um, rather surprising news that we all got um, pretty much after the DeSantis announcement. So we still don't have a clear picture of what really led to this um, series of appointments. However, it is completely legal. Um, the governor is allowed to appoint six board members to the trustees of New College. The other six are appointed by us. And the 13th member is actually the student body president, basically, our equivalent of such. Um, so right now, um, some of the kind of freak outs about, you know, new college shutting down, um, that's not going to happen. We, we're not in threat of being shut down because this will bring other types of funding that the school basically needed. And as you said, it's always been an interesting position to be a real liberal arts and authentic liberal arts college in the state system of Florida. Um, there was a lot of discussion you know, in general about how we can support students even before this happened, considering the current political climate in Florida and that many of our students are um, queer, trans, LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, there are many Black students who have experienced, um, you know, racism in the past coming from the school even. You know, it's not a perfect school. However, all of the alums, every single one of us, are quite concerned that such a um such an interesting and unique institution that is yet very liberal arts model and very rigorous and produce such a variety of scholars um communications directors you know people working in the federal government there's people there's new college grads all over the place when i took class with cornell west um he is friends with former New College president, Mike Michelson. He knows all about New College. Um, we're famous where we're famous for the right reasons because we produce very, you know, um, effective students in the world. They just don't always get paid. So the Florida metrics that came down the line several years ago have always been a challenge for New College um, because if you don't meet those metrics, such as employment rate in Florida a year or two after graduation, um, then their metrics go down. So right now, the school is not in any immediate danger, but the faculty have um, brought in the ACLU. They've been instructed not to use electronic communications because we do have people leaking information from various sources. Um, the students, are amazing and have you know organized over the weekend so if anyone is interested in um offering them your skills or support whether or not you're an alum um, their email address is ncf like new college of florida ncf and the number four freedom ncf for freedom at gmail.com 
So this is um, a group of, you know, mixed students, by the way, it's not that New College is a monolith either. This caricature that's being presented in the media currently by places not like WMNF, and I've asked, you know, I've had I've been asked to be interviewed by other outlets and I refused because I'm not going to feed into the clear entrapment um, going on on Rufo's Twitter um, and other things that the media tends to cover. Right now, we are focused on student safety and faculty retention. And by we, I mean concerned people, not, I do not represent the school, I do not work for the school. <laughs> but I do tend to be a hub for organizing and because I'm an ethnographer, I take people's privacy seriously. Um, and I just have a good understanding of the dynamics here. So these appointees are a done deal. Um, we have a new president. We're up for a five, five or six faculty are up for a tenure vote this spring. And then many board terms will renew or not in May. So there aren't any immediate what people are calling action items. We're very much focused on not overreacting, um, making sure that we do focus on the plans that have been put out by Rufo without him ever having visited the campus, or in my professional opinion, understanding it, anything about liberal arts education, because calling it the fact that he wants to change an authentic liberal arts model without grades into a quote unquote classical liberal arts model is just him drawing off the privatization of schools K through 12 and the fact that schools like, you know, the Covenant School and things like this um, are allowed to teach what they want, admit who they want. Um, so this is this is not this is not a new college problem. It's just that we had six seats open. He appointed them. We actually um, do very well in all lists of affordability, um, student faculty ratio. Um, you know, the stats are out there. The college looks good. It has always been a struggle to have a mostly Republican Sarasota population not really be in support of us. Um, so there were at least 200 people at the alumni board meeting last night, though, and there is only, um, you know, at least 180 of those were not board members. So, um, yeah, we're, we're asking the wider community if they want to use their professional skills, um, to help the students right now. I don't, think that we can get involved with the faculty because of the union. Um, but again, that the email address, ncf, the number four, freedom at gmail.com. This would be a good time for me to reintroduce you. We're speaking with Chelsea Hall, who is an alumnus of New College in, in New College of Florida, which is in Sarasota. She's a PhD candidate at Harvard in religion, gender, and culture. And you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. If you'd like to weigh in with your thoughts about New College of Florida, give us a call, 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. And uh, you mentioned a whole bunch of, of things that we'll, we'll probably circle back to and, and, <laughs> and talk a little bit more about those. But one of them is you mentioned the name Rufo. And we're talking about Christopher Rufo, who was one of the uh, people who the, the um, governor of Florida appointed to be a trustee of the new college of Florida. And in when the governor sent out his press release on Friday, here's part of what he said about Christopher Rufo. In recent years, Rufo has led the fight against critical race theory in American institutions. Rufo's research and activism inspired a presidential order and legislation in 15 states where he has worked closely with conservative governors and lawmakers to craft successful public policy. So my point of reading that part of the governor's press release is really to point out this isn't just a coincidence or it isn't um, uh, you know, just in general conservatives being appointed to the board of New College of Florida. It's, it's pretty well an orchestrated attempt by the governor to make big changes at New College of Florida. So before we get to all of that, let's set up, let's set the stage. A lot of our listeners have heard of New College, but 
maybe they've never been there. They certainly weren't students there. So what's it like to be a student at New College of Florida? Well, I cried the day I graduated, <laughs> starting at the end. Um, I'm not, you know, the most um, outgoing person, but because we have the choice of advisors, we have um, the choice of basically most of the class, there are very few requirements. Those are just like, you must take a science, um, but the culture and of acceptance and of being able to have dialogue and also being able to um, be respectful. I think we've really improved on that. There were some, you know, um, rather famous people at this point um, who were white nationalists and such who were converted um, and now work against such things. Um, besides it just being a, you know, a good school, it is a very emotionally, it, it's, it's always been a safe space for everyone in Sarasota. And now that Florida has just become a less safe space, because yes, this was ex absolutely planned ahead of time, not by the college. I, we still don't know that, but we know that legally he can do this. And this is going to be the model going forward um, for any other schools that have accidentally left open board seats or whose, you know, previous governor did not appoint board members before he left. Um, was there another question in there that I forgot to? Yeah, you know, one of the things that you mentioned earlier, but might come as a surprise to some people, is that you don't get grades at New College. How do you, what, what, what's that all about? As a person that had to learn how to grade at Harvard, I am still very firmly anti-grades. They are quite arbitrary. Um, you know, most classes actually set up a certain ratio of this many A's, this many B's. At New College, you don't receive any grades because it is a contract system per semester. Um, generally, contracts start off at you have to pass three out of four classes to pass your whole contract. Then you get credit for that semester. Let's say you don't pass three out of four. That is kind of a problem because you don't get credit for that semester. As you move on, um, you might have a four out of four contract, like I did by the time I was um, writing my thesis. So we have no grades. We just eat, we get narrative evaluations, which are personalized by each and each professor for every single student in their class. As a person that's had to learn how to decide what an A or a B was in an essay with no real guidance from professors, um, you know, that was always a real struggle for me. And I deeply believe that the liberal arts model without grades is the only way to allow students to have this kind of freedom to create their own plans, their own careers. And I mean, honestly, I'm 39 and I only keep up with them because I'm teaching 18 to 22 year olds frequently. They are living in a different world than we grew up in. They are better at organizing and avoiding traps, but they're also very stressed out. Um, so, you know, I tend to try to defer to what they're doing because they know their campus um, and they know what they want. But um, the rest of us, possibly with more money, um, connections and such should really offer our info to them and uh, um, to enable them to kind of pick and choose what they think they need because we really just don't know where the next challenges are going to come up. Our guest is Chelsea Hall, a new college alumna. She's a PhD candidate at Harvard in religion, gender, and culture studies. And we're talking about the appointment of six new members of the new college board of trustees by Governor DeSantis. And we're going to be joined in just a few minutes by the president of the United Faculty of Florida. So I hope you stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to ask us a question, give us a call 813-239-9663 or text 813-433-0885. Or you can uh, DJ at WMNF.org is the email address. And I want to say thank you to um, a couple of people who have already emailed in. Bubba writes, I'm curious about whether X Gonzalez will weigh in on this. They are a new college alum. They also know that NCF faculty are very concerned about this conservative takeover. DeSantis does not support critical thinking. So that's Bubba's thoughts out there. I have not heard anything from X Gonzalez. You may remember them from the Marjorie, they're, they're a survivor of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, 
went to New College of Florida. I think they're mostly living a quiet life now after graduation. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard them weigh in at, at all on this. I don't know if you've heard anything, Chelsea. Yeah, the issue, and we discussed it in the New College Alumni Board meeting last night, is there is no coherent kind of media response because this is a done deal and the next kind of sticking points will not happen until the tenure vote in the spring. Um, the faculty was only offered a 0.01% raise. So I don't think I really have to speculate on, you know, the possible consequences of that. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's, I, I don't know any alums, famous or not, that are not concerned about this. I, I mean, we, we don't have anybody saying, uh, you know, Rufo could make some good changes in the school, even because he's made it clear that he doesn't understand higher education. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. Uh, Chelsea Hall is a new college alumnus and a PhD candidate at Harvard in Religion, Gender, and Culture Studies. Thanks so much, Chelsea. Thanks for giving us thank some perspective. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate Bye. you coming on.